Welcome to another exciting air bike update. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Hey folks, welcome back. So this is an air bike update, not a radio control airplane update. If you are new to my channel, I am DAG, D-A-G, that's my nickname. I'm obsessed with aviation, but 90% of what I do is model aviation, which is giant scale aircraft over 150 inch span. But a couple of years ago, I decided to build an ultralight. Biggest reason I want to build the ultralight is um, I love flying, physically flying the airplane. It's just, I can't afford an RV or a Kit Fox or anything like that, but an ultralight I could afford. So this is an update on my wing. So um, I'm going to recap a little bit briefly uh, what I'm doing with this wing and why I went with bending of plywood versus going with the fiberglass and stuff like that. So uh, a little bit of this is going to be a recap and then we'll get into how I finished um, skinning this entire leading edge. Before I go too far, I want to reach out, uh, do a shout out to my sponsor, RTL Fasteners. They're really cool. Really cool company, everybody. They've got all the fasteners you need for the hobby. Bolts, nuts, blind nuts, lock nuts, spe specialty washers, uh, servo screws, all kinds of stuff. So if you go to rtlfasteners.com, spend more than $25 in product, use the top secret code DAG25, you'll get 25% off your order. Okay? So, <clears throat> if you've been watching this for a long time, some of this may be a little bit redundant, but if you're new here, I had kind of battled in my mind between bending the plywood on the leading edge of the wing or building a mold, uh, building a plug and then a mold and making a fiberglass leading edge. <clears throat> I've done an awful lot with fiberglass in my life and I know the fiberglass would be heavier. This plywood is 0.5 uh, millimeter uh, birch plywood, uh, 1.5, I'm sorry, 1.5 millimeter birch plywood and the leading edge of the aileron I think is the 0.8 millimeter but I had a couple of people reach out through YouTube and stuff and say bending the plywood is really hard. You should do the glass. It's a disaster to bend the plywood. And, and I, I mastered it, okay? I mean, I, I kicked ass with it. So I made these styrofoam forms. I got my Windex, my water, and my alcohol. Um, Basically, one part Windex, one part alcohol, and like two or three parts water is what I did. And I would wet down the birch. I would bend the birch plywood, get it to conform to the shape I wanted. And then I would let it dry for a couple of days. I went ahead and did all the skins for my leading edge and the leading edge of my ailerons. Leading edge of the wing and the leading edge of the ailerons. But... I want to kind of also discuss what I learned when I did the first skin on my wing and then when I did the rest of the skin on the leading edge of my wing. Because I, I had a little bit more challenge than I thought I would. I'm normally a one-man band. Uh, very rarely do I ask my wife to help me on my, my airplanes. <clears throat> but there's some things on, on skinning this leading edge where you might want to have a second person just hanging around to hand you stuff and just to help you out. But in the drawings of my air bike, there's some uh, examples of building a, uh, basically a block of wood that is going to help rubber bands pull the skin to the leading edge ribs, okay? And you cut these out like this and I ran into a couple of problems, and I'll show you in a minute what it was, but uh, you really need to trial fit everything. I mean, literally 10 or 15 times, folks, to make sure everything's going to really be square and tight. Uh, you know, my first skin went on pretty easy, but when I went to put on the next two and a half or whatever you want to call it, skins, I had some alignment issues trying to get things just to line up perfect, and one of the problems was a self-induced uh, uh, something I didn't foresee that was 100% my fault is the best way to put it. So right now my wing is sitting on my table. Okay, I ended up putting the wing vertical to put the skin on it so I could get to both sides of it. And I'll show you that in a minute. But I want you to look at this block and the way the rubber band's holding on. 
And then I want you to look down here where I circled it at that skin. On some of the parts when I was putting the skin on, the skin was too long to let that block of wood rest against the spar. So it wasn't pulling the skin tight. And I kept looking up through the end of the wing and I could see light between the leading edge rib and the skin. And I was kind of starting to panic like, why isn't this laying down? So I started adding more and more rubber bands and I knew something was wrong. Now keep in mind, I got all my glue curing and it's, it's the absolute worst time to notice something is not fitting airtight. So uh, I ended up taking little blocks of uh, spruce and, and shimming out this um, clamp here that the rubber bands grab and it fixed the problem instantly. But because the wing was sitting vertically when I skinned it, I couldn't see it unless I got down on the ground and looked up underneath it. So when the wing is sitting in this orientation and you test fit everything, it looked really good. But when I went vertical, even here, it looks, you know, it looks really good. But when this block didn't fit, it, it really become a problem. So now I want to talk about how I actually glued all of the skins on the leading edge. If you remember from the earlier video I did, I talked about I wanted to where the green is was going to be epoxy, where the blue is shown here is going to be Gorilla Glue. I was going to use my little bitty nails that I got from Aircraft Spruce to hold the whole thing square. And then I was going to nail and epoxy the skin to the spar itself. So epoxy on the leading edge former epoxy on the spars, Gorilla Glue on the rest of the skin because Gorilla Glue will expand and there's gap filling there if you've got any problems at all. So in theory, it should look like this. Well, on the first skin, I got paranoid about the Gorilla Glue. So I tried to do all of the epoxy and I wish I would have done Gorilla Glue because the epoxy, if the ribs don't fit absolutely perfect in there, you will see just a little slimmer of light come through it. And I had to get in there, actually reach in and squirt a little bit more epoxy in there. And I got it to work fine. On the next skins, I did it just like drawn here and it worked perfect. Okay. And then you add the rubber band, which is the orange. So this is green is epoxy, blue is the Gorilla Glue, and this worked fabulous. So this very first skin I put on, and this is a recap because I did a video already on putting this first skin on. It ended up fitting perfect, but I had to reach in with a syringe with epoxy and get it around some of the ribs where there was just a little twinkle of light through it. Now look, I've already had people criticize me for trying to be within like a 16th or 32nd accuracy on this wing. And that's fine, you can criticize me. But I always try to overachieve instead of making it just good enough, okay? So we got that first skin on. Um, I use T88 as my epoxy. I use the little syringes uh, that I put, a, uh, you know, put the apply the, the T88 with. I had my clamps and my rubber bands already. Don't forget, you need to seal the inside of the skin with either a shellac. I like to take my West System epoxy and thin it with denatured alcohol, and use that as a way to seal it from the elements. I have my little bitty nails that I got from Aircraft Spruce, which by the way, they don't have this on their website anymore. I think Wix still does, but uh, these aren't on the website. But you can go to McMaster Car and find a nail that's virtually this. But these are treated for the elements. These are made not to ever rust. Okay, the ones you buy at McMaster Car over time could rust, and that's not good on a wing. But I don't see my ultralight lasting 100 years like um, most airplanes are designed to last, okay? So, I got the first skin on, and then I went to put on this next skin. Now, the next, this, this skin here has to have a couple of notches cut in it for the hard point for the wing strut. Okay, so right here is where everything was a little bit wonky, me trying to get everything to line up perfect. Okay, and this is where I had to ask my wife to help me out a little bit and hand me some pieces and things as I was getting this all put together. Keep in mind, you're doing this all wet. Your Gorilla Glue's in there already expanding. Your epoxy's inside this. And I trial fit this thing like 20 times. And it fit perfect when I trial fitted it. But when I put it off, put all the epoxy and everything on it, put it on there, it wasn't lining up quite as right. And that's because these little wood pieces on the bottom 
I had moved them around and some of them were touching the skin and it wasn't pulling the skin tight. So you really got to make sure that you know what's going on here. Another thing, when you're doing a wing vertical like this, you need to put two supports along the bottom spar because the wing will sag. Now it's got drag braces built into the wings so the wings are, are rigid, but the last four or five ribs don't have the drag braces, so it can actually sag up to a quarter of an inch, which would be a disaster. So when I was finally done with this, when I fired my laser down the leading edge, I was within a 32nd of an inch of being straight. Uh, there is a couple of little bitty dips in it where the rubber bands pulled so tight that in some places it pulled it really tight against the leading edge rib and the epoxy is really tight on another one where I didn't have the same amount of rubber bands, there might have been a little bit more of a gap, but the Gorilla Glue filled it in. But when I looked down it, I could see a little bit of a wave, and I measured it. It's like a 32nd of an inch at the most, but visually when light's on it, you can see a wave, even though it's only a 32nd of an inch. So I ended up getting the uh, uh, entire wing skinned. It went really, really good. Uh, make sure, though, you're sealing all the wood. Okay, this wood all has to be sealed from the elements. The leading edge ribs, um, anything you put in there, like a block of wood or a, a, you know, like a joiner, it's all got to be sealed from the elements, folks, so you don't suck moisture into this. So don't forget to seal every piece of the wood on this airplane before you cover it. So I got everything on, and I got down to the very uh, last little piece, which was about, I don't know, 10 inches long or whatever it is. But see, you can see this just looks fabulous. But this little piece right here, now I did do something different from the drawings. The drawings talked about using, I think, seven or eight foot pieces of birch plywood. I did mine at 48 inches. The reason I did that is because I could buy it from Aircraft Spruce and get it sent here by UPS. It didn't need to be on a freight truck. So what I did was I built extra ribs that were quarter inch wide to become the joint. So I actually have three extra leading edge ribs in this wing than what's on the drawings. And those became the joints for the plywood to meet. Here is that little 10, piece, 10 inch piece that I've curved. I've already epoxied the inside of it to seal it. I want to put this on still wet, folks. I'm paranoid that if I, I seal that and let that completely cure, epoxy to cured epoxy, unless you rough it up real good, is almost like a mold that you're going to separate. It doesn't have great adhesion. So still put this on, at least my recommendation would be to still put it on wet. And look, folks, I only try to share with you how I do this. There may, may be a million other ways people do this, and that's cool. I'm just sharing you my journey, okay? And I'm not saying it's the only way to do it either. So basically, um, you know, I got down to the end of the wing, got that last piece of skin on. Now I flipped the wing back on my table. I do want to point out a couple of things, though, that when I built this table, I 3D printed hard points to support my wing, and there's some things that I'm going to show you from my 3D drawings here in a minute um, that you need to take into consideration, or you could put holes in your skin. But as you can see down that leading edge, it looks really good. Uh, it is just slicker than snot. Little shot all the way down the front there. Little shot there. So yeah, it, it worked out just fabulously. I'm so excited with this leading edge. And I tell you, that leading edge becomes a D-tube, uh, which becomes very rigid. I used to be able to flex the wing about six inches. Now it flexes about a quarter of an inch. It's crazy how strong this wing becomes when you lock in that leading edge like that. Okay, so now what I wanna do is talk about um, some 3D stuff I did in Fusion 360. So I originally designed this table in Th Fusion 360 that was going to hold my wing. I 3D printed these little blocks to support my spars. And here's my spars sitting on it. And here's a little zoom in of how it looks sitting on here. But I want you to remember, once you start building this wing, and you understand how these little red blocks are going to support it, they won't work as 3D printed when you put a skin on it. So imagine you've got a skin on this and it's going to poke a hole right through your skin. So if you're going to 3D print stuff like this, and all of these parts and pieces are available on my Patreon, folks. You pay five bucks and you can get all my 3D stuff I'm using on my Airbike. 
But and if you can't find it on my Patreon, let me know because I had somebody the other day say, hey, Dag, I joined your Patreon and I found this and this, but I can't find that. I don't know if it's Patreon or my old age, but the link wasn't there for the zip file. So if you are a Patreon member and there's things you can't find that you know that I've designed 3D for this, let me know and I'll make sure I upload it. But I needed to, whoops, let me go back. So I needed to reprint the leading edge support ones, not the main, not the rear spar ones, but the leading edge ones so that there's room for the skin now. Okay, so when you think of that sitting on there now and then you put the skin, it won't poke a hole in your skin. So the rear ones are still printed as advertised so that they won't let the wing move forward and backwards on the build table. So um, that's this update, everybody. So if you've got any questions, please reach out to me. I know a lot of people like to use my Gmail more than they like to publicly put it on my YouTube, and that's fine with me. I also upload all of this to my uh, Facebook. But uh, yeah, if there's anything I can do to help you all, let me know because... I'm trying to build the straightest wing I possibly can, and I'm amazed a couple of people have kind of made fun of me about that. Um, I mean, why wouldn't I want to try to make it the best I could? You know, I, I uh, sure, it could be a quarter inch off and probably fly fine, but why not try to get it to a 30 second, you know? <laughs> so look, and thanks everybody uh, for liking and subscribing all of my videos. I'm slowly building this YouTube channel. One, well, two last things. Number one, I'm only trying to share my own successes or failures. I try not to speculate. I try not to tell you what I think will work unless I've done it myself. All I'm doing is sharing how I do it, okay? And because there's so many YouTube channels out there where people talk about they speculate this would work or they think that this will work or they heard that this will work. And I've seen people waste thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on things that people recommend to do that don't work. So if you see me do it, and you know what worked, chances are it'll probably work for you. Lastly, please get kids involved in model aviation or full-scale aviation. Um, I've seen a real big turn in the last two or three years with a lot of youth getting involved, especially in model aviation. It's the gateway drug to becoming an engineer, uh, a fighter pilot. Uh, just There's a lot more opportunities in engineering and uh, stuff like that in life than getting a business degree and trying to sell used cars one day. And I'm, I'm kind of joking, folks. But please, try to get youth into model aviation. Um, please like, subscribe, and share my videos. And I will see you next time. Be safe, everybody. And have a great holiday season right now. Rock on.